Hi, this video looks at the influences on buying, selling and producing abroad. It's this bullet point here on the specification. Um, and we've already covered uh, quite a lot of these, so I'm not going to spend too much time on these. But there are various influences that would determine whether you're uh, buying, maybe raw materials from abroad from suppliers or uh, subcontracting work out, selling goods and producing abroad. The one thing that I would say to be very careful of is if you get a question on um, uh, internationalization and um, operating overseas, just be very careful about um, checking whether they're asking if they should sell to an overseas market or if they should manufacture overseas. There was a question on the 2017 uh, paper two about selling overseas and a common mistake that was made on that was lots of students answered on whether they should manufacture overseas or not. So just be very careful to read the question carefully. Um, influences on uh, buying from abroad, selling overseas, uh, particularly manufacturing overseas, are the costs of production, labour costs, raw material costs. Uh, if it can be cheaper to manufacture overseas, businesses might do that. Uh, the exchange rate can have a big impact on uh, whether you would choose to manufacture overseas. So, for example, the uh, value of sterling has fallen fairly dramatically since Brexit. And as a result, it becomes more expensive to buy raw materials from overseas. Equally, it becomes cheaper for British businesses to sell their product overseas. So there are pros and cons. <coughs> Um, protectionism and tariff barriers might be a reason for businesses to go and manufacture uh, overseas. So, for example, um, I heard on the news yesterday, this is uh, January 2018, that Donald Trump is imposing tariffs on washing machines produced in South Korea by LG. LG are therefore considering opening a manufacturing base in, uh, where was it? Tennessee I think um, so anyway you might decide to produce overseas to avoid protectionism and tariff barriers um, you may also decide to produce overseas if the market is particularly culturally similar uh, to your own so you don't have to make too many adaptions to people management marketing etc or if there are high cultural differences it could influence whether or not you choose to operate there the relative economic performance of different countries will pay an impact. So there's relatively slow growth in developed economies like the US and the UK versus the very fast growth in countries like China and India. But would uh, the potential high growth uh, that, that, you know, often that's a trade off with relatively low income consumers. So businesses have to take that into account. Uh, there's the opportunities to gain from synergies, from going into joint ventures abroad. We may be able to benefit from economies of scale, the experience curve if we start producing abroad. Um, the level of transport links between the home market and the market abroad would be um, important, particularly for certain products that are maybe heavy and difficult to transport. The availability of government incentives could incentivize people to buy and sell abroad. Or legal barriers like we've talked about, you know, is it possible for a British company to go and actually do direct investment or do you need to have a local partner? All of these would have an impact on whether an organisation chooses to buy, sell or produce overseas.